My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. But with bills to pay and a family to feed, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. Come along as I follow my passion trying to create art that shows the essence of nature in a photograph. I'll be sharing my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is Riding the Edge. Well, unfortunately, the last time I used this camera, I had a light leak. Now, it's quite possible, the way the, the light leak was situated, that it was user error. And I just didn't get the back sealed up when I first loaded the film. Because eventually, it was just the first few frames that uh, were messed up and then, then it was working fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm testing this camera because I really want to use this camera. I, it, it, it's such a fun camera to use. Very compact. It's perfect for walking around put a little 50 millimeter on it. It's just a great little walk around camera. So I'm not quite ready to give up on it. <laughs> and so I, I really need to test it and run a roll through it and just make sure that it, it uh, the light leak wasn't because of something I did. Now I thought, well, while I'm at it, there's a, a film I've been wanting to try. <laughs> I don't want to put an expensive film in this just to, to see if it's got a light leak. So what I did is I went and bought some Kim Mir 400. It's more of a budget film. I'm thinking it's going to be similar to HP5, but it's just a little bit cheaper. I figured well, this might be a great opportunity to uh, try this film out and uh, see if it's uh, something I might want to use in the future. I figured I'd try to tackle the, both tests with, at the same time. Well, I was just about to give up on making a photo. <laughs> And uh, this really fresh looking fern, all this new growth, the tonality is so much lighter than everything around it. It really caught my attention. And then the closer I looked, the center part of this with the two, two uh, fronds kind of folded, folding into the, into the frame, I think there's some balance here. There's something I can make. I think there's a couple different possibilities. Problem I'm having now is the, the breezes are picking up and I'm not sure <laughs> if I can get a fast enough shutter speed to make this work. But I think there's a, a vertical here in the center. And I might also try to do a, a horizontal because there might be a nice balance between, you almost have like four pieces of this fern that might work together so if I can get the wind to, to die down just a little bit maybe I'll make a frame I'm having a hard time with the balance. I was, I was hoping it'd balance a little bit better, but I still took a frame. Well, here's another shot of some more fern. This is gonna be a, a fern episode, I think. <laughs> it's just, I love, I love the, the, the tonality changes in this fern right now. The tips are lighter, and it gets darker towards the middle. Pretty cool.
the reality of using these old cameras is at some point they're going to fail. <laughs> and at some point they're, uh, they're not going to be usable. I view these as more disposable cameras. I will be the last owner of this camera. It will end its life with me. All, all my film cameras, I, I kind of picture them as I want to use them as long as I can. And then when they're done, they're done. I do know that someday I may not have the opportunity to, to shoot film, but I figure digital is always going to be there. I've done a ton of digital photography. I'm really just enjoying the, the film photography right now. Well, I finished my last frames on this roll on these ferns. They're uh, quite impressive. Just uh, making some compositions in this chaos. Just trying to fill up the finish the roll. This uh, camera's been carried around for a while out in the light. So if there's any light leaks, we're going to find out. Fingers crossed that uh, I can still be using this camera. But uh, we'll, we'll find out shortly when we develop that film. We'll get a good idea of what the Kent Mirror 400 is capable of. This is the kind of photography I'd be using it for and, and doing some, also for, for, for some family stuff. But a lot of my walk around photography is details and I, I kind of like a little grain in those shots. So I don't anticipate it replacing HP5, but uh, you know, if I can get the same thing for cheaper or close enough, well, maybe I'll give that a try. So we're going to end today's video right here. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride. As you probably figured out by now, there were no light leaks. And as far as Kent Mirror 400 goes, my first impression after this first roll is to me this film feels like a little less refined HP5. A little more grain, a little less fine detail. It's not a bad film. And I could see myself reaching for this film when I want a specific look. But most of the time, when I want a 400 speed film, I think I'll still be going with Ilford's HP5+. Plus.